First of all, let me thank the organizers of this incredible call and all the activity that we've seen coming from the North American and Latin American regions. You've been very active chapters of the Club of Rome, and uh, really it's a pleasure to be with all of you. What I want to speak to you about today is how we came to publish Earth for All, a Survival Guide for Humanity. As you know, 50 years ago, about 52 years now, in 1972, The Limits to Growth was published and also warned that if growth trends continued, we would overshoot Earth's capacity. And what we're seeing now in the 2020s and what we felt was so important when we were going to mark the publication of The Limits to Growth was to talk about the crises, the wicked problems that were facing us, and yet come up with uh, scenarios and solutions that could enable us to very much demonstrate that one, the situation that we're in today is an emergency, and two, that if we do start to act now, we actually can get ourselves to a certain degree, out of the mess that we've created. It will take some time. We're not pretending that this is going to be right away. We felt it was very important when we put together the uh, team for Earth for All that we use the system dynamic modeling and the systems approach that was obviously introduced in uh, the limits to growth and that was undertaken by the incredible MIT team under the leadership of Donella Meadows and Dennis Meadows, that we should continue to work with Jürgen Randers through his Earth 4 model and apply it to the limits to growth to indicate, as I said, that there's still time to change course that we could find certain pathways that could steer humanity away from the social and ecological collapse that we're seeing around us. If you look at what's happened since 1972 and the limits to growth, we clearly all know that predictions have become a reality. And what I think is interesting is when you draw a line through actually where we are in terms of 1972 and to now where we are, you can see the exponential impacts of carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere, population growth, nitrous oxide, real GDP that has grown but is really starting to decrease after 2010, and all of the other environmental uh, impacts that we know so clearly also through the work that has been undertaken on the planetary boundaries. So what we wanted to do was take into consideration the reality of what we saw around us. And as you can see, even the World Economic Forum is now clearly indicating and have done some systems work where they see the interconnections between social impacts, environmental impacts, and also the impact of AI, of digitalization, geopolitical impacts, et cetera. But the clear risks that are predicted through actually the analysis that have come out of the WEF match very clearly, as you will see, some of the risks that we're starting to see both from two years from now to 10 years from now in terms of the social risks, the environmental risks, and the geopolitical risks. And uh, I agree that these conversations need to be integrated at all levels. Again, I was very shocked to see how much the Secretary General took on board our, our thinking and will be integrating this into the summit of the future. If we can influence uh, more governments and demonstrate to them that actually there are alternative futures, but also that we need to move towards action, then maybe we can move forward. But as is indicated in the chat, by the way, uh, I'm not naive. I think none of us are naive. We've, we've understood the importance of both geopolitics and political governance and the big issues that we have right now in terms of our democracies being turned into circuses. So I really believe that we need to work very hard as a Club of Rome, but also with our own networks to ensure that we do not move towards the radical right or the radical left.